Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop. Today is April 3rd. So yesterday, uh, <laughs> some things appeared here with this radio uh, unexpectedly. That one is issues around the antenna and whether this is really the antenna. And the other issue is the what looks like an obvious oscillation through the IF circuits. So oscillating around 450 kilohertz. Uh, so, so it appears to me. Uh, otherwise, the radio may be working beyond all these things if it only had a good antenna and if it only didn't oscillate the way it does. Uh, I began looking into the question of uh, the oscillation, um, looking for uh, mistakes I may have made with the few capacitors I changed or something like that. I found nothing. But uh, afterwards, as you know, and maybe you do this too, after these videos are over, I go away thinking about oh, what just happened. That's kind of how, how it goes for me. And I think about things. Uh, one of the things I thought of uh, between then and now is maybe this antenna is responsible for the oscillation. Um, so right now, only one wire is connected, so... I, 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 so, so the situation is different, but when this is connected, it's a loop, it's sitting close to the radio, the radio may be spitting out enough um, output from the IF to be caught in the antenna and pushed through again, only to reappear as a oscillation. So it's possible the antenna is the problem. Now, like I said, the antenna is disconnected, so you wouldn't expect any oscillation now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so so I don't really have a good sense of direction with this. Radio, I think the next thing I might want to do is uh, reattach this wire. Forget the clip lead, it's too long. We'll reattach this wire to the uh, ground here. You know, I could just clip it here for crying out. Clip it, clip it to the ground somewhere. Or get it under a screw, that's even better. I'm going to put it under a screw. And... Uh, we're going to see if the radio oscillates, and then I'm going to disconnect this wire. Oh, that's not a good one. That's not a good one to pick. Let's pick a good one. What's a good one? There is no good one. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to have to clip it. I'm going to clip it on there. I'm going to get the radio going. I'm going to see if it still oscillates. Fool around with the antenna. See what happens to the oscillation, and go from there. Okay, let's let's see what happens here. We go. That clicking sound you just heard is actually the motor here. Okay. Old juice. Oh. Oh, 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 what's going on here? Oh, 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 something's wrong. Something's wrong. What's wrong? What happened? All I did was hook this up to, to here. And put my uh, voltmeter on. I already did this already. That didn't cause a problem. What happened? happened <laughs> ah, you know just when you think things are going downhill they really go downhill um, well uh, <laughs> uh, well there wasn't any smoke and flames so I, I maybe I turned it off prematurely let's, let's disconnect this go again That would be because I don't have the ground on from the meter. Yes, that's the problem. Yeah, I like that. That's what's going on. Okay, so we'll put the ground on here. Okay, put the voltmeter back on. Okay, we're back to normal. Okay. 
everything's back to normal. Except they don't have the antenna connected. See what's going on on the meter here. Now, with the antenna not connected, I'm going to tune the radio. Any oscillation? I don't think so. Getting pretty loud. No oscillation. I will now connect the antenna. So it, it got quiet, but I didn't hear any oscillation. <laughs> well, it's fixed. There you go. Oh my gosh. Um, maybe the position of the antenna? Okay, if you want to work, work. Let's see if it picks something up. Wow, I have to turn it almost full. Here. There's something about the loose dial here. See, the dial's moving, but the capacitor is not. It's getting worse and worse, too. So there still is a heteronine in there. Not sure what that's all about. So also, if you get my, get my fingers just the right distance here. Actually, closer seems better. <laughs> Apparently I'm a better antenna than the coil here is. Okay, not sure what to do next. Um, Got to think about it a little bit. Well, I'm going to go back to doing the alignment. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe the problems will reappear. But I was thinking about something else about this. So this is called the pinup. The name of this radio is pinup. Pretty lousy name for a radio. And there's the screw hole you'd have in your wall and you'd hang this up on your wall. Now, wait a minute, it has to be plugged into an outlet. So what, you're going to have a cord coming down, you know, from high on your wall down to some outlet to power this? No, houses, including this one here I live in, have special clock outlets back from the, uh, well, this house was built in the late 60s. So they were still putting clock outlets in kitchens. So my kitchen has a clock outlet. I have a, a battery operated clock hanging over it, but if you remove the clock, there's a recessed outlet. And the recessed outlet was to make room for the plug to go in and to make room for some cord if there was a bit of cord involved. And you could pack that into this recess and then hang the clock right over top. What about the antenna? You're supposed to have a wire coming out of this clock and going across your kitchen out the window or something? Of course not. Of course not. They would have no expectation that there would be a wire antenna for this radio. It must have been a loop antenna. It must have been a loop antenna. My guess is, this is a guess now, the loop antenna was lost. And somebody grabbed this one from another radio and just wired it in. Did they do the right thing in wiring it in? Well, they did a very simple thing. They just these antennas are not typically simple. As I was mentioning last time, there's a connection right here. There's a tap. Oh, I don't think we need this yelling at us. There's a tap. So what there really is is a couple turns hooked up to the radio, 
hooked up, I gotta be specific, a couple of turns carrying the signal into the radio. And then the bulk of this, as I understand it, would be hooked up and tuned with the capacitor. So you're tuning this, it becomes resonant, the uh, Q is extremely high, so this thing starts to really sing at the frequency that it's tuned to, if there's an incoming signal. And then that powerful singing here in the antenna is picked up by the couple turns and fed into the uh, radio to find the uh, grid of the first two, one way or another. So you need three wires going to the radio from here. But there's only two, because there's nothing hooked up here going to the radio. There's only hooked up what I determined to be the two outside wires. So the whole coil, the whole coil is the antenna here, the way it's connected. Now, is this a good idea? Well, when I look at the schematic, there's no indication that there's a loop antenna. There's just a line with an arrow on the end saying two antenna, and there's a capacitor in the line. Now that really screams out wire antenna. So I can't resolve these things in my head. I, I can't sort it out here um, just by looking at stuff. Maybe if I review all the information again carefully, I'll find a hint somewhere about this. There is a hint. There is a hint. And the hint, there is a hint. The hint. Connect the signal generator to the standard Hazelton Loop Model 1150. Okay, so this is my version of that. And couple it loosely to the receiver loop. There it is right there. It actually says it. Okay, so there was a loop antenna in this radio. Is this the loop antenna? You can see the uh, glue on here, which was gluing this back into, into a back of a radio. Could it possibly be this one? No, because this has got four chunks of glue. It would look like the antenna was a small thing just running around in here. Now, was it a two coil? Like a tapped antenna like this one, or was it a single coil? Now, so so this is the antenna I've got. This one. How can I maximize this with this radio? Yeah, can can I assume it's not really connected in the most effective way? What about that capacitor to the antenna wire? In the schematic. This is really not adding up too much, is it? So I'm going to look over the information, see if I can find more hints on this. And this guy's not oscillating now. Why is that? Such a question. Why? Well, as often is the case, when you're looking for one thing, you find something else. So, just looking through all this information, trying to find more about the antenna, when I noticed this statement. This is a compensating resistor, approximately 1100 cold and 200 hot. Item number 26, line dropping resistor. Line dropping. What are they doing there? So we look at the schematic. Now, the number here, it would be easy if this number was on the schematic, but of course the schematic is numbered differently, so there is no resistor number 26. But we can kind of figure out where a line dropping resistor would be. Here's the line. Here's one. And here's another one. So, um, I don't want to say too much about these. Uh, but I think this one is the line dropping resistor. Uh, this one looks like it's producing a voltage to run the light. A voltage across here to run the light. And this one is dropping some voltage off because there's only this many tubes, only four tubes in here. So we got to get rid of 35 volts or something here on this resistor. Well, that raises an interesting question. What is the voltage on these tubes? Now, I've been, you know, I'm, I'm not Mr. 100%. I'm pretty happy at 80%. Something I've never checked, or very, very seldom checked, are two heater voltages. 
Not that it has any bearing on what's going on with this radio, but let's take a look. Okay, so this is the line coming in. Let me just turn the camera down a little further. This is the line coming in, attached to this red wire, which comes up to this terminal. So this would be the incoming line voltage, which I think is 104. Let's see if it is. This is 109 on my meter here. Almost 110. It's interesting over here. Just see my finger up there. Okay, so I can see the light. The light brightness is showing me how much power is coming here. When I do this, the light goes dim. Is this just like a bad outlet connection here? the clock motor doing that. <laughs> well, how long has this been a factor? Oh, oh, I must have pushed a button here. There we are. 110. This is this. I'm boy talking about getting back to square one. This is square one, all right. 116. Well, this guy's not very accurate. Or he's off. Okay. Uh, now, let's carry on with the interesting stuff. <laughs> it just gets... It just... You know, the, my sheet of, of weird stuff just keeps getting longer and longer. So we're going to go after the heater voltage. Heater voltage should be nominally 12 volts. So we're going to pick this tube first. We're going to see what's on it. It's pins three and four. Pins three and four. Wait a minute here. Fourteen and a half volts on the heater of this tube. When we come up to this one, we count one, two, three and four. Hopefully it's still three and four. Saw 14 there again. Well, we saw 14 for a moment. That's yeah, for same voltage. Hmm. So two 12 volt tubes. Now we're at the 50 volt tube here. Um, I don't know which the pin out and the other tube. You can't get at with this to test it. So, somewhere we should be dropping 35 volts before it gets to the string here. I think these are the two dropping resistors. I am now going to measure the drop on these resistors. 60 volt scale. This big one. Okay, so it's not quite 6 volts, and this one. So together there's 16. Where's 35 volts dropping? Is it this guy? Um, this is right in the filter. This big one here. And there's another higher wattage one here. Um, 
So I can read the values. These look really new. Ooh, don't touch them. They might be really hot. So if this one's a 33 ohm, and this one's a 22 ohm, this guy, uh, it's got a pinkish colored band. That's probably supposed to be uh, seven. It's probably 27, probably 2700. This last one looks like it's been overheating. What is happening with all these? So I can see this one is mounted between the two positives of the uh, filter capacitors. So you can probably find this on the schematic quite easily. Okay, having said that, let's take a look. So here's one filter capacitor. Where's the other? the other one. C12, C11, probably here. This is probably it here on the uh, screen. And then this would be the resistor in between, R9. Um, so if we look at the parts list, even though the numbering isn't correct, we can look at things like wattage. So here we see a 2 watt resistor red 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 in the filter but that's not what I've got I've got red I've got red what's probably violet red Another, so then there's a bunch of single watt resistors 22 47 and 150 150 is probably the uh, cathode resistor 50 is probably this one right here. Or 7. It's just the numbering is not helping. Well, it'll be pointed out over here. These are big resistors. They're easy to spot. So let's go see if we can spot them on this diagram. Oop, not this one. How about this one? Um, uh, this one. There we are. Okay, so the big resistor is right, right around here. There's two resistors right in this area. This looks like a big one right here. And that would be I think, I think 23 and 24. 20, 20 is also pointing at a resistor. Don't know what 24 is pointing at. So you need nothing there. Two resistors there, that's all. So this is the other resistor. So 23, 24 are the two resistors of interest. 23 and 24. So we'll find those on that parts list. 23. 24 uh, resistors, 23, there we are, and 24, 47. Surge limiter, part of the filter. So it's a typical Pi filter, the resistor in the middle. Um, then we should check the resistance of these resistors. 47. So when I look at it, what I see is, you know what? That's a 47 ohm resistor. I can see the yellow. This is the one that's overheated a bit. And then the 22. 22. Yeah, 22. But there's one more. This, this uh, temperature, this uh, resistance changing resistor. This one here, 26, line dropping resistor. Well, let's find that on the diagram. 26, where's 26? Where are you? Oh, here we go. 28, I don't see it. Uh, other diagram. Six. Would it be up here? Oh, there it is. Twenty-six. Uh, so it's showing it. It's showing. So here's here's the uh, the the uh, forty-seven, and this is number twenty-six. And it's supposed to be. 
26. It's supposed to be uh, varying. i to go back to the other page to read about it. Wait a minute. I'm lost. I've lost myself here. Go back here. Very. Starts out at 1100 when it's cold and goes down as it gets hot. Uh, that's not what's in there. What's in there is just an ordinary run-of-the-mill 33 ohm resistor. So somebody is, this, this original compensating one probably burned out or something like that. And the guy replaced it with the best thing he could do. Now, it's supposed to go, be, be, see, when the radio's operating, assumably this resistor's hot, so it's at 200 when the radio's operating. And what's in there is a 33. And is this part of the voltage control of the tube heaters? It's controlling the voltage the entire radio. So let's 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 go back and see if we can really figure out which one this is. 1100, 26. We're going back onto the schematic here. So the numbering doesn't pay it doesn't pay attention. The numbering doesn't pay attention here. Uh, so we see it's hooked right up. No, wait a minute. It's, no, 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 no. It's this one. I don't think I found this yet. If this is the temperature compensator, how are we going to figure this out? So this is the filter one. Oh, this one's described as the filter one. This has to be the uh, the line dropping resistor with the weird characteristic, and that that is in basically the way you got you coming in, you're coming in. <laughs> you're oh hey look at this. This is an important capacitor here, C13. And um, yeah, this one could be. If this is missing, it's respond. This could be responsible for uh, the uh, howling in the radio, the oscillation in the radio. I got too much stuff in my head. Too much stuff in my head. I'm going to pour some coffee in there, slosh it around, and, and see if I can't figure out what, what to do here. There's too many factors floating around. Okay, why don't we take a look at some temperatures here on this radio. It's my thermal viewer. Right now it's set kind of low. It doesn't take much heat to produce a red. Yeah, I have a lot, way too much red there. So I'm going to change the settings. 30, 35, 40, 45. Let's keep going up. Okay, only very hot things will make a red spot on the screen. Right away we see one, that's for sure. Where is it exactly? So we're seeing the vacuum tubes here. I'm interested in this resistor, so I'm going to isolate my view of it this way. Temperature is 100 and just gotta make sure I've only got this in view. 75. Well, that's hot enough to hurt. It's within the range of a resistor like that, uh, but it's near the top. Wouldn't want it much hotter than that. Only feeding the radio with 110, it could get 120, plugging it into an outlet with that kind of voltage, you're going to raise it up a little bit higher yet. And we've got high voltage on two of the tubes, never measured the 50. Let's, let's measure the 50. 50 C5, find out what kind of filament voltage it's got. Now it should be just 50 volts, but I suspect. 50C5, this is the 50C5 here. So if we want to look at the heaters, three and four. 
3, 3 and 4. Okay, can we find 3 and 4? Very easily. 3 and 4. So 4 is this white wire that's coming right up to the, the uh, right up to the power line. Right to there. We should see 50 volts on this. I bet you we're going to see 65. Ah, yeah, come on. And it's easier to do it here. And here. I saw 50. Oh, it went over. I said 65. 65. Look at that. Good guess, Jim. 65, right on the money. While these tubes are running with too much voltage, they're supposed to be, uh, well, we can add them up. 12, 12, 12, and 50. So that's 36, that's 86 volts. So we got to get rid of everything from 86 to 110. 86, so let's make it 90, 20. You gotta get rid of 20, 22, say 25 volts. That's to 110. It'd be 30 volts if you wanna get rid of a, if there's a higher uh, line voltage. But the actual voltage we're getting rid of is five, six volts. And that, this thing is hot. Hotter, hotter, hotter. Wouldn't wanna to touch it. Just through my work when I worked in the power company and touching hot cables with my hand. These are big uh, cables the size of your arm. And you put your hand on them to see how hot they are. I used to use a, a, a thermometer or temperature thing, but I finally realized that that's stupid. You can find out a lot faster with your hand. Yes, a cold hand and a hot hand feel heat differently, but generally speaking, your hands are at some average temperature. So anyway, I managed to calibrate my hand and I found out this. At 50 degrees C, for me, it's like this. I put my hand on it and go, oh, don't get burned, but can keep my hand on it. Above 60 degrees, I feel like I'm getting my hand burned. I'm going like that. Above 60, I don't know. I can't, you know, but below 60, I can, below 50, I can keep my hand more or less on it. So at 75, I think I would get burned off of this. A lot of heat, but it's probably coming from this tube, which is also running hot. They're all running too hot and too heavy. And what that'll do is it's going to wear them out early. It won't do much else than that. Wear them all. They're all suffering because this resistor is a replacement. Now, why would he pick 33? Did you not look at the schematic? This could have been done long enough ago didn't have the schematic. Pulled out this, well it would have been burned open resistor, I'm guessing, burned open resistor, can't measure it. It's a weird resistor, didn't realize, may not have realized. And he just knew, you know, generally speaking, you put a high wattage one about 50 ohms in there, he dug a 33 out and stuck it in. But he should have measured the drop on it. He should have measured the drop and known he'd, he'd missed. So really, I should put a 200 ohm high wattage resistor in there. Oh wow, do I have something like that? Can't be a wire wound resistor. At least I don't think you can put a wire, you shouldn't put a wire wound resistor there, I think. 200 high wattage resistor. Uh, maybe I should turn the power off. I'm cooking the tubes there. Okay, I'm gonna, I, you know, I gotta think more about this before I do it.